If you plan to take the Cisco CCNA exam, you better hurry up because you only have 4 months before Cisco completely removes the current CCNA version. You see, last week Cisco just announced a new release or a new version, CCNA version 1.1, that will go live on August 20th, which means that you only have until August 29th to pass the current CCNA version. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the difference between these two versions and also my recommendation on which version should you take and how these might affect your CCNA schedule or study plan. Okay, so first let's take a look at Cisco announcement for the current version. As you can see, uh, Cisco does this process on a regular basis and you only have until uh, August 29th to pass this exam. And if you're really preparing to take this exam, my recommendation is that you take this exam before August. You see, if you take this exam, let's suppose on August 15th, you and you fail, you won't be able to retake the same version of this exam because on 20th, uh, this exam won't be available. You only have the new version. Now, according to Cisco policies, you can only retake an associate exam after five days. So my recommendation is that you take this exam uh, around July because in case you fail, it will give you some time for you to review on those concepts that you were weaker and probably take a second exam or take a third attempt. I failed a couple of times and until you pass successfully the exam. Okay, so this is my recommendation to you. Now, as for the new version, there isn't much change actually in comparison to the current one. Uh, if you take a look at the main topics, uh, network fundamentals, network access, IP connectivity, IP services, security fundamentals, automation, programmability, those are actually the same ones that we have in the current version. The main difference is uh, the inclusion of generative AI, cloud network management and machine learning. Now, let's take a look at the exam topics to know specifically where those subtopics were included. So the first one should be on network access. So network access, that should be 2.8. Describe network device management access uh, related to Telnet, SSH, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, and cloud managed. So this essentially refers to the way uh, network admins manage uh, network devices. So for cloud-based solution, uh, should be something like uh, Cisco Meraki, that it is a cloud-based solution that allows you to manage devices on-prem or inside the data center, but all of these uh, being done from the cloud. Now, I haven't found uh, any specific documentation as to which technologies or solution uh, Cisco expect candidates to be aware to take the CCNA exam, but in case Cisco update this, I'll let you guys know as well. OK, so let's take a look at the next subtopics and they should be here on automation and programmability. Now we have the section 6.4 and 6.6. .6. Now, section 6.4 uh, says explain AI, generative and predictive and machine learning in network operations. So this should be something like, uh, let's suppose, use uh, chat GPT or any generative AI to help on managing network uh, devices. Uh, again, Cisco haven't uh, launched anything specific to which solutions, which technologies, uh, which generative AIs uh, the candidates should be aware of. So we're still waiting for this. As for 6.6, .6, uh, so this is related to Ansible. Now, Ansible has been around for some time now. Uh, and if you compare this with the previous version, you had uh, Puppet and Chef. So these two were removed and you only have now Ansible and Terraform as the network automation tools that a CCNA candidate should be aware of. Again, if you've been preparing to take the CCNA exam, my recommendation is that you do it before August. Now, in case you haven't been studying and probably you will take the new CCNA uh, version, uh, 
you shouldn't be worried actually because there are major changes uh there are some additions yes uh specifically to generative ai and so i would say it's quite obvious or simple to study at this moment uh, but in case you want to get started with generative AI, I actually have some resources that you can start using just to get your feet wet on this topic. So one of the options is to take uh, the course uh, Generative AI from Google. It's available for free and you can do it, I believe, on a couple of hours, probably if you just take a day. Uh, there are uh, five modules. So they last around so 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, five hours. So yeah, probably just take a week and starting this should be enough for you, at least to have an understanding about generative AI. You can also search on Google for generative AI training. I even found a link from Forbes where they highlight uh, some of the uh, generative AI trainings that they recommend. Uh, so I'll share these links in the video description as well. And another option is the generative AI from NVIDIA. So I believe that's a good one because NVIDIA has been a big player on this market as well. And this course is also available for free and it will take you two hours. Okay, so those are the options for generative AI. As you can see, there isn't major changes on this exam, actually. And in case you were studying or you know someone who is studying for this exam, make sure to share this video with that person. And in case you found this video valuable, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.